Today, I'll present to you the story of Florence, a small republic that must navigate a Europe with a completely different history. This is because I'm finally playing one of the best EU4 mods, Antebellum. I'll follow the path of the Peasant Republic, which allows me to gain unique vassals on the road to unifying Italy. Will I achieve the dream of Italy? We'll see. I invite you to check it out. Welcome, imperialists. Lucas here. Initially, I'll set rivals, of course, the Genoese trade league, the Papacy, which always has issues with Florence's freedom, and Siena, probably because it's a potential conquest target. For now, as a duchy, I belong to the whole Holy Roman Empire, ruled by France, Yellow France, at least for a while as it heads into civil war, after which we'll see if it stays yellow or turns blue. Social estates don't show anything extraordinary, so I've granted mostly standard privileges. Regarding the papacy, there's a mission that could be interesting. Maybe we should try one day to build good relations and sway them to our side. It's literally swaying the papacy mission. But for now, I'll uh, focus on building a large spy network within the papacy. I've hired advisors, though they aren't really needed because Cosimo de' Medici still rules Florence, but not for long as the tyranny of the Medici event is coming up in a few months. It's better to move your troops out of the capital. Regarding potential allies nearby, it's worth considering alliances with Lombardy, Venice, or a brief alliance with the Caliphate in Sicily. I'll try to ally with Lombardy or Venice, though I'll need to improve relations first. I've also recruited 3,000 infantry for my army, and now I just have to wait for the Medici tyranny event. I I've allied with Lombardy since an alliance with Venice is currently impossible. Another alliance was formed with the Duchy of Ivrea, something like that, mainly because they have a mountain fortress which could be very useful someday. Meanwhile, France is deep in a civil war. Some things never change, even after 600 years. The tyranny of the Medici. For the past two decades, the Medici have been scheming to take power for themselves within the Nazca and Florentine Republic. In the last election within the Signoria, they plan to elect a member of the Di Calimala Guild as the next Gonfalonier, but due to the influence of the Pope Eugenius IV, who had received a generous donation from the Medici family, enough votes were swayed with Papa pressure to elect Cosimo de Medici to the position. This event brings certain consequences. We can keep the current Republic system. Boring! The Tuscan Signoria, which I haven't shown you yet, or switch to the Tuscan Military Signoria, or hand power to the people and create a Peasant Signoria. And those are the bonuses of each of those governments. I'll go with the Peasant Republic path. This also changes the direction of the two missions here. Honestly, I chose the Peasant Republic because I'll have some special republics likely for my vassals. It says that every sister republic country of us will receive. We'll also get reduced liberty desire and a historical friend. Nice. I'm curious about the challenge the hegemony mission, which might let us turn two hegemons into peasant republics or spark a peasant revolution. Meanwhile, army is annihilated and the nobility has vanished. That's not good. The first mission increases morale by 10% and mercenary manpower by 15%. It's not very useful, but I'll take. It. Switching to the Peasant Republic has angered the current emperor. My first goal now is to capture Pisa and its monument, and along the way, Romagna. Easy enough, Pisa now has an island, I didn't expect that. The Franco-German crisis has ended, leaving Franconia as the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Sadly, this means beautiful Lotharingia might soon cease to exist. Pisa keeps retaking the fortress quickly, dragging out the war longer than expected. The Renaissance has arrived, though not here. 1350 day siege, this might be a record. Anyway, Bologna becomes mine, and all of Romagna becomes my vassal. I'll conquer Pisa and Elba next, making Pisa mine and Elba my vassal. I'll wait a year for the coalition against me to weaken. I forgot how aggressive expansion makes provinces expensive to take. A war between France and Lotharingia breaks out, inevitable in this game. The Renaissance has arrived in Florence, so I can complete a mission that reduces Florence's development costs. I also missed out on a Renaissance bonus. Urbino and the other papal states have declared war on the papacy, probably the end for them. I managed to hire an advisor that boosts our ruler's level by one, gaining 10 points of innovative a significant amount, and cheaper advisors. My vassals are slightly disloyal, but I'll improve relations to fix that. Unfortunately, I have no nobility, so I can't take the privilege for more vassals. Now, how to create the sister republics? I don't see any diplomatic options for it, nor in the peace terms. How can I do this? I switch to an advisor specific to this mod, reducing provincial development costs by 10%, as I plan to develop Bologna, which will be easier with the cloth industry's 10% bonus. Once the province reaches the third level, I can implement infrastructure improvements, adding a 5-year special modifier for only 36 administrative points. Despite all efforts, I still can't find the sister republic option. With high aggressive expansion and a resulting coalition, I won't conquer anything for a while and will focus on developing my provinces. I've chosen infrastructure ideas as my first ideas to reduce infrastructure expansion costs, which complement my government form. Lower construction costs will also be helpful. A note from the future, mercenary and vassal strengthening ideas are more effective. Since I'll have a long period of peace, I'll enact an edict to increase prosperity in these provinces. 
though I need to stabilize the region first. Piedmont has emerged great news. Prosperity is growing steadily, which is crucial because it further reduces provincial development costs and boosts production. I chose reduced aggressive expansion as my first era bonus, though I also considered a bonus for fighting on the territory where my capital is located. The upcoming wars won't be easy. For the third reform, I changed to more frequent parliamentary elections, shortening the term from four years to three. This will let me produce six, six, six rulers faster, which is great. Did I really complete this mission before Leonardo da Vinci arrived in Florence? I might even hire him at my court. The coalition against me has ended. At a low cost of 71 gold, I'm building production buildings everywhere. I also integrated my vassal for several reasons, mainly because I need to develop new provinces. Unexpectedly, I needed to make territorial claims on Croatia, which is allied with Luca and Siena. I mistakenly mentioned these countries in reverse order, but I need both provinces to create Tuscany. I've already built roads everywhere, though I don't understand why this building isn't in the base game. The Pazzi conspiracy hit me, causing a stability drop which really hurts. Honestly, let's hang all the Pazzi supporters. Meanwhile, Yellow France has expanded significantly. It seems that in this mod, Italian states can't leave the Holy Roman Empire, which unfortunately slows down my conquest here. For my second idea group, I chose plutocratic ideas, which should work well. They reduce province development costs and offer other useful benefits. I finally gathered 50 favor points from Sicily to break their alliance with Croatia. The worst part is that even if I attack Croatia, I can't call Luca or Siena separately because they're free cities and the emperor always guarantees their independence, which is a problem because the emperor is very powerful. It's rare, but Yellow France managed to avoid a crisis. Luca and Siena's armies fell immediately, standing no chance against me. I gained 39 aggressive expansion for one country. Wow, that's bad. Fortunately, Bulgaria, my rival, attacked Croatia at the same time, which helped. What's left of Croatia is just a potential vassal. Luckily, I also managed to conquer Pisa. I had to end this war because Croatia is on the brink of extinction and Carniola declared war on them before I could breach their fortress. I won't conquer that province. I have no idea how to create these peasant sister republics in the normal way, so I'll try another method, although it requires direct conquests, which I can't do now due to high aggressive expansion. I'll focus on improving relations and making another country my vassal. After future conquests, I'll release more vassals. I can now form Tuscany, which isn't much different from Florence except for the color and name. We still have the Tuscan ideas and the same government form, but, but. Now I know how to spread our republic by gaining a casus belli called Spread the Republic, although it only lasts 25 years, so I'll wait. I managed to win over the papacy, which I thought was impossible to do peacefully, but it didn't benefit me much. I'll have to do it as the Medici someday to possibly get papacy. Good choice. Tuscan Pope. Respect. Developing Florence is a pleasure, with green provinces compared to before. After developing more provinces, I became a local power with 232 development points, without conquering uh, much. Most of my provinces are at level 30, again, with high point growth and low development costs, which is key to success. I also deliberately lag behind in diplomatic technology to introduce it cheaply later, while advancing military and administrative tech for innovation points. Perugia decided to sell us its freedom. Literally, I bought it. I must admit, this mission seems quite interesting. As an Italian nation, I gain one point of professionalism for each fort I build. Over time, this could lead to nearly endless professionalism. I also recruited the Black Company, which I enjoy since I love the book. I can even afford to rebuild Pisa now. The second level of infrastructure lets me build a monument cheaply. With only 20 aggressive expansion points left, it's time to decide Tuscany's future. Now that I have no aggressive expansion, I'll attack Genoa with this new casus belli and see what I can do. I can't conquer provinces, but I can create a new republic. However, I'd prefer to conquer all of Genoa for myself and convert the other republics later. Boom, boom. They survived, but they didn't. I have so many advisors. Where did I get them? My many advisors are cheap and I'm earning well. Winning battles gives me bonuses for the next 35 years and the ability to recruit elite condottieri. Making mercenary companies cost no professionalism, which is powerful. It's like having mercenary ideas. Let's see how mercenaries perform in battle. They did well and I completely defeated my opponent opponent's army. After the war, I gained control of all Genoese territory, boosting Tuscany's power and prestige internationally. Unfortunately, Sicily broke its alliance with me after my conquest, but that might be for the best as they'll be my next target. I'll attack my first country with the new Casus Belli, while France attacks Sunni Sicily. They only have claims on Sicily, but might take more. My fleet is sinking because I forgot about it. I'll also attack Sicily while waiting for my previous war to end. From Venice, I took war reparations. Parma is now my vassal republic, which will likely be very peaceful. I released more nations from Sicily to make them my vassal republics, if Venice doesn't conquer them first. My power as Tuscany continues to grow, though I don't 
don't have some institution, and everything is clear. Overall, I'm curious how quickly this institution will spread across my territories, especially since most of my provinces are at level 30. It should spread within 10 months, and from what I can see, our future wars will be focused on conquest through these sister republics. So I played this peasant republic really poorly, and honestly, I regret not utilizing these republics more. I should have focused first on conquering the Tuscany region itself and made the rest of the states through sister republics. Unfortunately, the emperor himself stood in the way of spreading the republic. We'll have to conquer him. Let's just hire some military companies. That's why I'm attacking. I must admit, the bonuses for my mercenaries are really powerful. Okay, the Emperor's troops have arrived, and I must say, I'm surprised at how poorly they are commanded, because they aren't really commanded here. And here's just one. Really just one. That's why I sent my mercenary units straight into battle, and they'll get their asses kicked. No. It didn't work out, but I'll manage. I don't know where the large Frankish army has gone, but I'm taking advantage of this moment. Wow, they have such a morale advantage. But no matter, they're suffering greater losses. Speaking of the institution, well, well, it's spread everywhere and I'm implementing it cheaply at this point, instead of 700 gold, 147. Honestly, crushing the Frankish, French, sorry, armies in subsequent battles is pure pleasure. Especially since they're taking much higher losses than I am. I can't believe it, but I have a direct route to Paris. Now the fun begins. I introduce the 9th military technology to France's 8th military technology and off we go. Beautiful. And without hesitation, I'm heading straight for Paris to capture it. Now, with the next mission, we'll be able to create even more advanced mercenary companies at the 8th, 12th and 16th levels of military technology. Okay, a company with 10 cavalry and a commander who isn't great at assaults. Where's that Frankish army, seriously? From France, I'm taking a lot of money, war reparations and demanding they return Nice. I must admit, I've taken very few losses. Now I'll continue further conquests after occupying Romania. We get the same Casus Belli on Venice and some place called Po Valley, wherever that is. So I guess only on Venice, which means I need to build my fleet. Preferably a few heavy ships and galleys, which take two years to build. What's wrong here? A person would like to start conquering Venice, but they can't because rebellions are breaking out somehow. And really, I can't because I don't have a fleet yet. And here I see a mighty Venetian fleet. So, before Venice, I'll attack Lombardy to release a vassal here. And beautifully, a new country liberated, and I'd like to attack Venice, but they're at war with someone, which might actually be good, I think. So the time has come to expand our republic. Yes, I swapped out the black company for this cavalry company. Why not? I have a feeling that my battle with the Venetian fleet won't end well, because the Venetian fleet is usually stronger, especially since they have more heavy ships, and I really don't know why I took transport ships, so I allowed myself to withdraw from that one battle. And can I upgrade the ships? 12 ships? Oh yes, now this will probably be a winning war. For the third idea I'll choose, I could pick trade ideas to make the country richer, but I think influence ideas will be more useful for the peasant republic. And as usual, I did all the work weakening the emperor. Oh, my soldiers here are on vacation, and right away Andalusia attacked France. Fairly comparable forces, although France has twice the manpower reserves. Meanwhile, I'm conquering all of Venice for 10 points of aggressive expansion. I think I really played this republic poorly. Taking advantage of the Emperor's weakness and wanting to recover my troops that are on vacation, I declared war on France again. I don't know why, but they have 25,000 troops with almost 100,000 manpower in reserve. My war goal will be to capture Paris because I want to become an elector of the Holy Roman Empire. It so happens that my vassal became one earlier, and I didn't notice it. I could also have made claims further into the next countries in the Lombardy and Piedmont regions. It so happens that I've secured two large vassals in these regions. Overall, it works well, it works just like a casus belli for a personal union. With the mission to stabilize our peasant state, I'm rather waiting to capture these two large vassals in the north, so that each of them gets a historical friend from me. I must admit, these vassals work quite amusingly too. When we aren't at war, they completely disband their armies, and as soon as I declare war, they immediately recruit them. I don't know if those aren't mercenary armies really. A little mystery. Finally, revolts broke out in France, oh no, but I got what I wanted from this war, so I'm ending it. With the money I've gained, I'll continue developing Pisa. I think France is finishing these wars with a huge deficit. I wouldn't be surprised if they go bankrupt soon. What have I done? Look at this mission. Why didn't I read it earlier? No. Protestant Reformation? How nice. I was actually waiting for it to start our golden age, but I still have 10 years for that. France has been so weakened that the emperor has been changed to Upper Burgundy? But how? I defeated them earlier too. Well, nothing, that's good. A weak emperor is in my favor. And let's see if this modifier really works this way. Starting from 1532. 1537. How nice. And already this entire area gets it until 1582, and I only developed that one province by 10 levels. I could have had those bonuses in every single province. Oh, it works separately for each province. It doesn't accumulate. Uh. 
Okay, so, it's not that great after all. The future of France. The Carolingians have lost control over the empire, and now the emperor will decide what happens to them. Either France will be expelled from the empire or become emperor again. Oh no, let them be expelled, they'll be an easier target. Sad news has reached us, France has been expelled from the empire. And for that, they declared war on Burgundy to take the throne? This might actually be interesting, and it led to a great civil war, and now I can either support the current emperor, so if France loses this war, it will be divided into some smaller nations. Or, I can support the Carolingians in their bid to become emperor. Honestly, I want France to fall. From what I see, it led to a massive civil war in the Holy Roman Empire, which isn't a religious war. That's really interesting. It doesn't change the fact that my side has a 2 to 1 numerical advantage, so we'll probably win this war, looking at the civil war map. I did my part in this war, I captured the French capital. Although there are still their troops here, so maybe I'll go break them up. From what I see, France is bankrupt at this point, that's right. They have no chance at all in this war, I supported the right side. I'll take advantage of the chaos in the empire to simply expand my signoria to the remaining Italian republics. Oh, I can't, I forgot about that mechanic. France lost the war, and I think I misunderstood what would happen. It turns out France's vassals were supposed to leave the empire. Well, never mind. Anyway, France has been expelled from the empire, so hooray! In theory, they should be a much easier country to conquer. But never mind, I'm moving on to conquer a few more republics and establish my government system there. Another signoria for the collection. The Dutch revolt also broke out, and now we can decide within the empire what will happen. Defend, no interaction, or side with England. Unfortunately, the Empire decided not to support either side. The time of Tuscany's Golden Age has also arrived, and basically I've conquered all of Northern Italy. These conquests lead me to the restoration of the Commune in Mantua. Great. Since we've taken over and defeated the Doge of Venice, I also get the following bonuses, leading me to the formation of Italy. I'm getting closer to that. And we have the Iron Crown. All that's left is to become Italy, so there's nothing left to do but create it. I'll take Italian ambitions and traditions because I'm really curious about what they are in this mod. And they are a bit worse for playing tall from what I can see. They're also worse than those in the standard game, in Europa Universalis 4, much worse, but they might be good for playing further with a focus on mercenaries. I really should have played this Florence completely differently. But, oh well, the dream of Italy has been fulfilled. Which means I have a lot of text to read. The ruler gets 5 discipline as long as he doesn't die. I thought at least the vassals would be integrated for free. But at least my form of government has been slightly changed. Now we are the United Italian Commune. Which, in addition to the bonuses I had before, gave me parliamentarism. And in this episode of Victoria 3, you can see how I create a powerful European Union. But just a bit more red. 